Hey everyone, it's Mike from Orphos here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for today's video. I'll be talking about iceberg orders. And before I jump in, you know, if you've been enjoying these videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any new upload. And if you find today's video helpful, be sure to hit the like button for me and leave a comment sharing your biggest takeaway. You know, I do love hearing your feedback. Um, actually, today's video on icebergs do come from some of the comments because I, I did get uh, quite a few over the last couple of weeks about, uh, hey, can I do a video on icebergs? You know, your support really does go a long way in helping me create more awesome content just like this video. So if you're getting value from my channel and want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's uh, grow together, right? You know, I want to grow this channel out as well as, you know, I want you to learn more about trading specifically with order flow. All right. So the topic of icebergs, um, you know, th there's a lot of conversation in uh, trading about iceberg orders right, and what they are. So basically, you know, an iceberg order is a large order, either a buy or a sell that's intentionally hidden from the market, you know, hence the term iceberg, right? Um, say it's uh, an order to sell 300 contracts and the trader just decides to show 20 contracts at a time, the order will refresh, you know, think of it like an iceberg, right? Only a small uh, part of the order is showing. Now, an iceberg order is generally going to be a passive order. It's going to be an order that sits on the bid or sits on the offer. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean all iceberg orders are passive. Someone can, um, you know, say the market here is, uh, you know, 45.21, right? There's 105. Maybe they buy 500 at on the offer at 21, show 100. So then they would buy whatever's on the offer at 21, and it would work a bid um, showing just 100 at the time. That is... An iceberg that would be an iceberg order but it it's you know an order that's lifting the offer right that that would be an aggressive buy um so it could come in in different forms now <laughs> originally right with sort of the the advent of electronic trading you know back in the old days in the mid 90s cme had globex um the cbot had project a i mean initially it was called aurora but in all, all intents and purposes they renamed it to project a and then NYMEX COMEX had what was called access. And the only system at that time that you were able to hide size was NYMEX COMEX, meaning, you know, the gold markets, copper markets, or obviously crude oil, heating oil, et cetera. Um, and, you know, I, I have a chart here. This is a footprint chart of crude oil. I actually, I should pull up a, uh, a depth map, uh, sorry, a dome rather of crude. Just give me a second here. Okay. And, Crude is a market, you know, where generally the bid and offer, you got around 20 contracts, more or less. Sometimes you're going to have a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but it's about 20. And I know from experience in dealing with a lot of crude traders um, and trading crude at an institutional level, at, at commodity trading firms, et cetera, that that is a market that generally is iceberg regardless. Anything over, you know, 10 or 20 contracts is going to be iceberg, whether it's iceberg showing one contract or showing five contracts or showing 10 contracts. Um, they're, they're going to iceberg their orders. That's just sort of in their nature. I think it sort of goes back to the the older days of um, when electronic trading first started in that market. Um, that was just sort of one of the unique features of it. And when you're looking at a footprint chart, Okay, a footprint chart is showing you what actually traded in the market. It's not showing you the depth of the market. Okay, so you don't know. You can't. I'll be honest, right? You're not going to look at a footprint chart and say, "Oh, this was iceberg," or "or this was iceberg." You know, this 162 was iceberg. You don't know that, right? Because you're just looking at what actually traded. The only way you're going to be able to see if an order is iceberg if you're looking at a dome, right? The depth of market. And to even a, a lesser extent, if you are looking at, say, a, a heat map and you're sort of watching what's going on in here. Um, now, if you're looking at, you know, a footprint, right? If I'm looking here, again, right now this market is trading, what is it? Trading 19, 19 and a quarter. I see the bids and offers being traded. I'm not looking at how the depth is changing. I'd have to be watching a dome. So people, honestly, take it as a grain of salt in the sense that most iceberg orders over a certain size are going to be hidden. Okay. For example, okay. So you see crude, right? 21 by two, but the size in here, you know, it's about, you know, 35, 63, 72, 20, you know, even on the bid five, 55, 52, 17, 18, 18. If I look on the crude chart, 
you know, I'm seeing obviously more size than that going through here. I see 65, 89, 72, 113, 55. So generally speaking, there's icebergs in here, right? And I, I understand that more size is going to come in, um, you know, when you start getting a little bit closer. I mean, that's how traders work, you know. Um, algos are taught that, you know, especially a lot of these uh, high-frequency trading, you know, they're going to work a bid. As soon as that get filled, they're going to work an offer um, all day long. That's what a lot of HFT, HFTs do. But as the market going up, and, and this is something that retail traders don't understand, okay? What they do is they see a market going up. Because I've seen people explain icebergs like this. Oh, this 172 is iceberg. This 162 is iceberg. Um, you know, the 160, the 109 is iceberg. Yeah, it probably is. But that's just sort of a, a side effect of, of a large order, right? Large orders, people want to hide the size. Does it have special meaning? Some icebergs do, but I'll get to that in a moment. But if a market is going up and it's making new highs, and you're a big trader, you have supply to sell, where do you want to sell? On a market that's rallying or a market that's selling off? Well, it's going to be easier to sell. The liquidity is going to be there. That buy side liquidity, that aggressive buying is going to be there on the way up. So if, if you're an institutional trader, if you're a big trader and you got a lot of size to sell, a lot of contracts to, to, to move, the easiest place for you to get rid of them is on a rising market. So I'm not surprised to see big volumes coming up here on the offer side as the market's going up. Now, was 172 showing? Probably not. 162 showing? Probably not. You know, it was probably showing, you know, if the order was for 50, maybe it's showing 10 contracts. Now, does that make this iceberg order something special? No. It's just a large order. The trader doesn't want to reveal what he's doing. But if a market is going up, I'm expecting there to be supply on the way up because I know as, as again, I've been an institutional trader. I know that the easiest place to sell is in a rising market. Am I going to sell exactly at the top? No, I don't need to, right? Because if I've already identified that, hey, you know what, 8900 is a good price to be selling at, I'll be dropping my offer in. I'll be dropping in at 95, right? You can see here, another five cents higher and another five cents higher. And I'm just averaging my price. That's what institutional traders do. They average price. They don't pick a certain level and try to, you know, be that specific. They're going to average in and out of their trades. Now, if the market starts falling and you're an institutional trader, well, all you're doing is you're making the situation worse because now you've got supply to sell, but the market's already falling. You know, if you're sitting here, oh, you know, I got to sell, you know, it's trading 89 bucks and then it gets all the way up to 89.21. And then you're thinking, oh, you know, then it's, you start seeing a drop, you know, maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm going to be smart. You know, institutional traders got a lot on their plate, right? They're not trying to micromanage every single tick that goes through. They're not going to sit here, you know, they have their levels, 89 bucks, 89.50, 90 bucks. Then if the market starts drip going lower, next thing you know, oh, I missed my 89s. Because I'm, I got greedy up here at 89. Then they start coming in with supply, coming in at, at 90, you know, at 75. They're just pushing the market against themselves. Okay, that that's not how institutional traders think. When a rising market and they got something, they they already think it's in the money. It's a good place to sell. That's where they're going to get out. Okay. Now I see some gurus online. I, I don't like to call myself a guru. You know, I just speak from my own experience. But they'll say, oh, you got big size up here. Um, it must have been an iceberg order. Okay, so what? Really, where are you going to want to see an iceberg order come in? And honestly, the only way you're going to see it is if you're watching what's trading on a dome or you're watching the depth of the market and you're watching it refresh, right? Because you don't know. If you're looking at a footprint, it's static. Okay, they're going to say, well, you know, if market is going up and then it just starts going sideways and you're starting to see size come in, then, um, you know, that's a sign of an iceberg because the market is struggling to go up. But really what an iceberg is, is going to be that constant refreshing of the offer if you're, you know, at a high price. But, you know, the, what some people say is, oh, you got icebergs coming in here, so it's going to be bearish. But really all what you're seeing is supply coming into the market, okay? Now, getting back to which icebergs matter. In a rising market, an iceberg on the offer it, does it matter? A little bit, but really what you want to see, and again, 
it's hard. You, you, you'd be guessing looking after the fact at a footprint chart that there's an iceberg order here, but probably there was honestly. But you'd honestly you'd have to be looking at a depth of market, right, to see people selling into the bid and that bid refreshing. You know, 17 lots trade at uh, 22. And then next thing you know, there's 25 again there. That 25 trades. Next thing you know, there's 25 again there. Okay, you'd have to be watching that. That that's one of the benefits of of using a dome. But honestly, you know, if you're you know, crude oil, it's, it's pretty calm right now. But if you're you know, say you're say you're looking at uh, you know NQ, all right, or just jumping around, it's going to be difficult for you to to accurately say, yeah, there was an iceberg order. Now there are tools out there, right? Bookmap has one, an iceberg. Uh, tool. I, I don't use Bookmap, so I'm not going to say whether it's good or not. You know, they they have great tools, so I'm assuming it's it's a legitimate tool. There are some thoughts that go into it, and you know what is interesting. You know, I don't know if they're doing it, but if they are, then those the, their programmers are are smart. The guy, the team behind there, I know for a fact that at CME, unless it's changed since I I left that industry, you know, in that sense of of working at the bank, I know that there's what an order generates, right? When you click an order to go in, what is generated from the exchange is a ton number, ticket order number, T-O-N, you refer to ton, if you got to call the exchange if there's a problem with the order. So if you're going to buy 500 E-mini S&Ps and show 25, that order for 500 would have a unique ton number, right? A T-O-N number. And that's how you would identify the actual order. But if that was an iceberg order, it would know based off that ton number that the order is being refreshed. But that's that's a little bit deeper. I don't know if the exchange puts that information out to sort of to the public or, you know, um, that can be used to, you know, program something around. But that is, you know, ways that the, the, the exchange can is able to identify it. I don't know if that information is publicly available. But anyway, if the market is going up, right, this 142. So if I see 88, 83, and I see 20 lots on the bid, and then it trades out, then another 20 lots come in, it gets refreshed. That's where I'm going to be interested in an iceberg. I'm not going to be interested in a rising market with an iceberg because that's where I'm expecting, you know, supply to be coming in. But if I'm making new highs, and I see big bids coming in, like here, right, the 142. Now, again, I don't know if it's, honestly, if I'm looking at a footprint, I don't care if it's an iceberg or not at this point. I, I know I, I have demand coming in. I know I have a big supportive bid coming in right here at 88.83, right, 142 contracts traded. To me, that is important to know. It, most likely, it's going to be an iceberg. Again, anything in crude oil, you know, above a certain size, you know, above 20 contracts, is going to be iceberg anyway okay so you know sometimes you know people they, they like to associate volume like increases in volume and um you know and the price not moving as an iceberg when really what that is is it's absorption taking place or distribution right if the market was going down and you see strong selling going in there it's being absorbed yeah it's probably being absorbed by an iceberg order because again Pretty much anything over a certain size is going to be iceberg. You know, the average trade on the CME is like, especially like in the E-minis, is like 1.4 contracts, okay? And if you don't believe me, I mean, let's take a look here. Okay, well, go on, on a footprint. If I were to, let's see here. Okay, well, let's just keep it simple, right? A tick chart right? Tick chart is per trade, right? And you're seeing in here, right? Each bar, 1,588 contracts, 1,600, 1,500, 1,400, 1,700, 1,800, 1,005, 1,005, 1,004, 1,004. So, you know, maybe it's about one and a half contracts. I mean, some bars, you're going to be bigger. Here's two and a half thousand. Um, over here is 1,300. Okay. So, you know, that's what execute the, you know, the rise of the algos are doing now. They're breaking down big orders into small size, whether it's trading on the bid or whether it's trading on the offer. Okay. Because, you know, any sort of thing that's going to show up here on the dome, right? People don't 
you know, it, it, just go back here, right, to the E-minis. You can see the, the contracts, one contract traded, okay? That's what that one is there, how many contracts traded. Right? There's going to be times you're going to see 100 flash through. Now, again, you know, something, you know, here, I, it, it jumped up. Um, you know, some of the domes out there, this is just the basic dome from Ninja Trader, okay? Jigsaw has a great dome, um, you know, where it will track the volume that traded at each price, sort of the inside bid and offer, um, what, what traded through at, you know, at different prices, which, you know, is probably can be important to use if you want to use it in your volume. But, you know, to, to sit here and say, oh, look at this, the market came down here and I'm seeing some size go through that there's got to be an iceberg. And really what you're looking at is absorption. Um, people are sort of distorting the whole concept of icebergs. And to be honest, most orders are icebergs. If you were to go to talk to, you know, an institutional trading desk, you know, the, the order executioner, that guy, he's going to tell you he's icebergging the orders, right? Because last thing that they want to do, right? You want to, one, if it trades, you want to participate. But two, last thing you want to do is telegraph to the whole world what you're trying to do. So again, you know, it, it, let's just go really quick to a, well, we'll go to, um, you know, a contract that trades a lot of volume, 10 years. I'm not going to use a thousand tick. I'll use a four range chart, right? Because 10 years, okay, so you see 10 years, you know, several thousand at each level. Okay. It's a very deep and liquid market. You can see over here it traded um, 12,600. Right when it was offered at uh, 109.23 and a half, do, do you see any really big size in here? I mean, up here at 29 and a half, up here just right above the high of the day. You know, there's 27,000. That's pretty big, right? Okay, but I think as if we get up there, it'll probably dissipate a bit. Okay, um, but you see here what's trading? 17 contracts. Last trade that went through. So even though there's a lot of size, doesn't necessarily mean there's a lot of size going through. Now, on a deeper contract like, like treasuries, yeah, if someone's got 10,000 to sell, maybe they're showing 2,000. Maybe there's, you know, I, I very rarely you're going to see a size like 27,000. But, I mean, you can, where it's sort of showing all. So again, you know, the whole, the whole point of showing 27,000 up here above the high of the day, I know people are going to get excited, get a hard on because, oh, there's 27,000. You know, we can't possibly trade up. Well, we, we can, right? And you got to watch, right? If it's going to stay or not, it, it could thin out, right? If we start getting up to 28, 28 and a half, I think this 27,000 is going to go down to 5,000. I mean, that, that's just my own, um, based on my own experience, right? Cancel if close. That was always the the joke, you know, people would see size in the market and, and cancel if close. All right, so that's sort of my uh, video on the, the subject of icebergs. Um, are icebergs important? Yeah, yes and no. I think it's more important on where they come in. But again, really to identify an iceberg, you know, truly identify an iceberg as a trader, you know, you're going to be want to focusing on the dome. Because looking at a footprint and trying to ascertain there was an iceberg here, you, you can't. You're just you're just guessing, okay? Because one is is you're just looking at the volume after the fact, and you know I, I don't want to mislead people in thinking that yeah I can see it. Hey, you know what? There was an iceberg here when one I wasn't watching it, and I can't say for certainty that there was, but you know maybe there's an iceberg. Honestly, most orders over a certain size are iceberg anyway. But um, if you're watching a dome, you can see where the icebergs are coming in and when they're trading. All right, guys. So uh, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any more of uh, my new videos. So thanks for watching, being a part of my order flow community. All right, everyone. Take care.